Welcome back to my channel. I am your favorite mother of three, hopefully, Bougie Vintage. And today's video is the continuation of this telenovela. Obviously, when I drop my series videos, I communicate with you guys as per usual, you know? And so um, sometimes you guys are confused or you ask me questions or you just say what's on your mind. And so I saw this one comment in particular and I was like, hmm, there's two things that I wanna mention in this video that I forgot to say in the last video. So the first thing is this comment. So I got a comment that was like how, I didn't screenshot it, so I can't, I'm going off of memory, but it quoted me saying that I'm enjoying sharing what happened and then said like other people in the situation like other women that would go through something like this would not be able to um share it like that and pretty much just saying like if it's like i never had feelings for my ex and blah blah blah, blah, blah. and i'm just sat there like are you okay? <laughs> then they also said something about like a Taurus, like being a Taurus and Taurus like to pretend that things don't phase them. And, so, and I'm like, I literally went through eight months talking about the situation, how much it hurt me, how like even in this story time, I talk about how hurtful it was. And so that comment was giving a little bit dense, you know, a little dense. But the reason that I'm able to talk about it, laugh about it and share it so freely and openly is not because I never had feelings for my ex. It's not because I am um, now cold and callous. <laughs> um, no, the reason that I'm able to share it and I'm saying that I am enjoying sharing it is because this is something I've healed from already. It's old to me, so it doesn't pain me to talk about it and relive it. The only thing that is difficult about um, sharing it is really just accepting that that was my reality, you know? I'm okay with that being my reality. It's pretty much the same as when he cheated on me and then I, I'm pregnant a few months later and I'm embarrassed by it but then I had to live in my truth and so to me it's just my truth and like I don't I'm not gonna apologize for my truth <laughs> like it's never giving that for me and I mean my life is what it is and I'm happy living my life and so I just feel like um even if you're hurt um by someone or something that someone did or didn't do, whatever the case is. Even if you are hurt or were hurt in something, when you're talking about it, um, to me, it gives you more strength to talk about it. The more you talk about it, the less it hurts. So pretty much, you guys are hearing something that I've already shared with my family members and you know my friends. I've already told this story many, many times. I've told it to my therapists. Okay, I've spent money on therapy. Some people don't have that luxury. By the way, if you watch my Unpopular Opinions video, you know that therapy should not be a luxury. It should be free, but because I'm able to go to therapy and I was in therapy before I left the relationship and then after leaving the relationship, still am in therapy actively weekly. Because of that is why I'm able to talk about things. So it's not that it doesn't, phase me per se it's not that i didn't have feelings for my ex you know um you don't have well unless you're a narcissist you don't have children <laughs> with somebody that you're not in love with or that you don't love unless of course you have a one night stand and things go awry you know what i mean you also wouldn't fight for your marriage um so i was deeply in love with my ex um but that's just a chapter that closed and had been closing for a while so that's why when i talk about it I, I talk about it the way that i do because it can't hurt me it tried to um and and really tried to that relationship tried to empty the clip on me girl like it really tried to deplete me and it didn't and god is good okay so i finished filming hours ago i actually forgot one of the most important pieces to this whole entire story. I'm glad that I edited my video in sections because I would be so mad if I just edited like one long video and then this part never made it in. So around the time that I am like 100% sure that Chucky is having an affair with Rapunzel, there was an incident at my house 
where Chucky was having a bath or a shower, sorry, before he was getting ready for work, he had come home real late the night before. And um, obviously that was already an issue in the relationship. You know, we would fight about that constantly because I just felt like it was disrespectful. I was like, you're married, what are you doing? You know, if you wanna be a bachelor, go be a bachelor, but just don't be a bachelor while you in this house, okay? I would ask him about his general, like the general manager of the entire restaurant because he was a married man as well. There wasn't a lot of married people at the restaurant. So because the general manager was married and had children as well, Chucky would always be coming home and talking to me about this general manager. So I would say to him, like, do you think that, uh, we'll call him Peter. <laughs> do you think that Peter is allowed to just go and come as he pleases? Do you think his wife would be okay with that? Um, no married men are behaving the way that you behave. And Chucky would tell me he doesn't give an F about what other married men are doing. He is him, he's grown, he's gonna do what he wants to do. We would argue a lot about, you know, coming home at a decent time because I used to tell him too, like, I don't care about you going out. That's not where my issues are, you know? My issues are more so around spending time with the kids, spending time with me, of course, you know, I do matter. <laughs> the fact that he didn't have a work-life balance. So I was just like to him, you know, you have to make time for everybody. You can't just always be over there at work. Like it's not cool. And then on top of that, you're getting a little bit too big for your britches, just like, you know, going out all the time and being irresponsible. Then this night or this morning in particular was the morning after he had come home late from having an affair, okay? And so he's in the shower and my kids are running around in the hallway and they have a freaking EpiPen in their possession. What? Do you know how dangerous that is? My kids are literally running around with an EpiPen. Whose EpiPen? Miss Nut Allergy herself, Rapunzel's EpiPen is in my house. So at this point, Chucky's getting bold, bringing home mistress's things. That was the same as to me as bringing home somebody's panty drawers, okay? Sniffing panty drawers. Why is this lady's EpiPen in my house? She don't need the EpiPen, baby. She don't need it. And he tells me an elaborate story about why he has it and how they always borrow her EpiPen at work because people have nut allergies that come to the restaurant and blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. He was bringing home his mistress's items, okay? And I was like, are you dumb? Because actually, when my sister was in the 10th grade, I wanna say, she had been playing with her friend's EpiPen. And when you open an EpiPen, it just shoots out. So uh, my sister had opened the EpiPen and it shot into her thumb and she had to get seven needles and damn near lost her thumb. So when I see my kids running around with this orange and blue thing in my hallway, I'm like, are you stupid? You just have it lying around all willy damn nilly? Like have some freaking decorum. Have some decorum in one, don't bring nobody a uh, EpiPen up in my house, okay? To be so irresponsible to have it in any reachable place that my kids could go and get it, because my kids be getting into everything, okay? So that EpiPen should have been nowhere near my damn house, but, he brought this EpiPen into my home. I knew it was hers because I knew she had a nut allergy. And so when I went to go press him about the EpiPen, he was trying to say it was from work. I said, no, it's not from work. This is Rapunzel's EpiPen. And he sat there stuck on stupid, have nothing to say because he already knew that I knew. So my kids' lives were in danger because he brought his whores EpiPen to my house. And so I couldn't leave this part of the story out because it was so important. And it was one of the last things that put all the pieces together for me because um, it was just <sighs> further confirmation of what I already knew. There was another incident too where I realized, oh, he getting bold because he was putting his hair up one morning and he started um, using the comb to comb his hair to like sleek it after he put it in the bun and he was showing me this trick with the thing but I'm a girl I already know these tricks right I do my kids hair like I do my own hair I know the tricks with the comb but he learned that from his one of his mistresses girl I don't freaking know but he learned that and was being bold 
and showing me this new trick that he learned out of nowhere and asking me if I knew that he could use the comb that way. And so I'm side eyeing him at that time, like, yeah, it's not that big a deal, but I'm a woman, right? So it's not news to me, but he would be getting bolder and bolder. And so he didn't have boundaries, but he had Rapunzel's EpiPen in my house and my kids had it and I had to take it from my kids and cuss him out about it while he's ass naked in the damn shower. But yeah, I couldn't leave that part of the story. So I just had to throw that in here. So if this, if you're seeing this clip and it's in like the most random of places is because um, it should have been in part four, now probably gonna be in part five, okay? So yeah. I said, no, you're done at eight. So what I'm gonna do is come and when you, uh, come and pick you up after your shift is over at eight and bring you back home to the kids and I'm gonna go out. He said, if you show up here, you won't even have to pack my shit, I'll do it for you. Baby, he didn't know what he was saying to me. He didn't know what he was saying to me, baby. I said, you're not gonna threaten me. What the hell you just say to me? Baby, packed everything, left not a dust mite, okay? I was not about to have that. I said, you wanna leave so bad, you acting like you got umpteen places to go, well, go be there then, okay? So, um, of course, at this point, him and Rapunzel is in there deep like swimwear, okay? So, he knew he had a couch or a bed to sleep in, so he didn't give a damn what I did, or did he? So, I pack his things, and he doesn't believe that I packed his things, because baby, I packed it in the matter of 30 minutes, baby, I was done, okay? 30 minutes, I had everything packed up in the garage ready to go. I was not playing any games, and I knew that I was serious at that point, and that there would be, the door was closed, like Nini says, okay? I knew I was done, because I packed the PlayStation. I didn't pack the PlayStation when I brought the duffel bag. PlayStation was still sat at my house, baby, I was still watching Netflix on there. <laughs> Um, but like I literally packed everything. I was dead ass serious. I took everything out of my bathroom, everything out of his closet, one much in there. I took everything, I put his Montclair, and so I blocked him after two. I, I told him, I packed your stuff, and I blocked him. And then um, I think I had to unblock him for something, to say something else. <laughs> so I did, and um, he thought it was a damn joke. And so I said, no, this is not a game. This is not a joke. You're not gonna tell me that you'll pack your things. You obviously have somewhere you could go. So I took a video of what was in my garage and I sent it to him. He said, where's my Montclair? I said, in the garage. He said, not the Montclair. <laughs> Girl, grow up. I was so annoyed. So I'm like, I took the Montclair out of whatever bag it was in and put it on top of the stuff because he's very particular about his stuff. So I put it on top of the stuff, sent him a video with the stuff in the garage and said, I'm not joking. Your stuff is in the garage. I'm locking the door. You're not welcome here, period. That was the last day that he would actually live in my home because around that time, even though we were discussing, you know, working on the marriage, ADHD medication, blah, 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 blah. I had gone to my therapist and told her what was going on and she had to humble me real quick and tell me, mm, people that have ADHD aren't necessarily abusive. So those, some people that have it can be abusive. Not everybody that has it is abusive. So that is not the cause of your problems. And so this is when I'm like learning like, okay, so, it's more on the narcissism side. Like she's still not telling me plain and simple. And I told you guys, I don't like to read between the lines, but like she pretty much just walks you through the abuse and you know, she like waits for you to get the picture, right? And so she's like, um, she's like, wow, way to call out that gaslight or whatever. Like if I'm telling her the stuff that's happening in real time. And so um, she starts using those terms and then giving me tools and stuff. And then that's what really woke me up and was like, okay, so I am in an abusive relationship and I do need to escape it. Um, and this ain't no regular degular thing. I kick him out permanently, uh, but we still had children. It wasn't just an easy breakup. So then because he was homeless and obviously I couldn't just be dropping my kids off at Rapunzel's house or wherever the freak uh, to sit on the couch with their daddy. Like, 
we had to still be communicating about those things. It wasn't until one weekend, he was coming to take my kids to the park near our house. And, oh, nope, forgetting a big part of the story. And so, remember, in the last part, or the second last part, girl, when I told you guys that Rapunzel was about to state her claim as his new mommy, well, one day, me and Chucky are arguing after I kick him out. And we're texting and I'm doing what I do and hold him accountable. And he has this bright idea to give his mistress the phone. Why would you do that? So we're texting, I'm talking to him, and all of a sudden I get this message that's written by a woman? Whoa, 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 whoa. You have disrespected me enough. We are dealing with serious marital issues, co-parenting issues. We're trying to iron out the details of our divorce and you're gonna give your phone to your mistress? Oh, baby, I lost it, okay? Uh, so I get this message that's pretty much turning the abuse on to me and telling me that the conversation we're having is abusive and pretty much telling me, you know what, let me pull that bitch up. Hold on, let me tell you exactly what it said. So I'm literally talking to my husband that I had not even been separated from for a long periodically time at that point. Like the separation was very new, I had just kicked him out. And so we're talking, I'm holding him accountable, right? And this is a conversation between me and him. This ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. The fact of the matter is, I'm holding him accountable. So we're talking and he, like I said, hands his phone over to Rapunzel and, Rap and, and Rapunzel types this message out, pretending to be Chucky. Listen, this conversation is abusive at this point. The, from the time I read the first line, I said, this man really just gave a hoe the phone to text me? Is he crazy? Things did not work out and we both know that. You threatening my rights with my children is something I won't stand for. P.S. was not happening. Please stop sending me threatening or emotional abusive texts. Only contact me in regards to the children, pickup times, if the kids are sick, emergencies, etc. This is the woman texting me this. Has no idea what's gone on in these four walls. Is just entering the picture as the mistress and had the nerve to tell me about what I need to do where our children were concerned. Oh baby, you know I was heated. Um, and not only that, you're pretending to be him. I was so mad, okay? You're making this more complicated than it needs to be. If you decide you want to do this amicable, he don't even know that word. Let me know. If not, this is how things will be moving forward. Who wrote that? <laughs> Baby, Rap Puzzle was feeling bold. I, like I said, she was stating her claim as his new mommy. So I said, you're not about to try to reverse this onto me, Chucky. You are the abuser. I'm the one that had the strength to leave. You are not a victim. Me and my children are. You're an abusive, narcissistic, lying boy, perpetuating the same things your parents did, projecting your undealt with traumas. So save the BS for someone else. And tell whoever wrote this to mind their mother effing business, okay? Then, Later that day, I think, I said, come and get your stuff out of my garage today or they're going to the Value Village, okay? Because that was like the most extreme level of disrespect. He had already disrespected me, devalued me, done all those things. But to give your mistress the phone to text me, unheard of, unbelievable, doesn't even know what she's talking about because she only knows what he's told her, okay? And is sat there denying the abuse and then turning around and calling me the abuser. And so I'm he did, baby. That was my first conversation with the mistress. They weren't gonna fool nobody. I knew who to frick. Then it must have been 
the following Saturday, he had come, like I said, to bring my kids to the park. And um, he pulled up in none other than a little Fiat, but he parked it down the road. So when he brought my kids to the park, I went and saw what kind of car did he pull up in today? Cause I saw where he walked from. So I walked over around the corner and I saw the little tiny clear car. So this is the day I took it upon myself to finally address Rapunzel because I've been new about the affair. We've been separated all of two seconds and this heifer is texting me from his phone being disrespectful. But because at this point I'm thinking this man is a serial cheater, I don't know if he has 10 girlfriends. So I needed to be able to know for sure it's Rapunzel before I text this lady looking crazy. And so I do. Keep in mind the first time I actually messaged Rapunzel was in March. Um, and I said, hi, work wife with a heart emoji. Couldn't find my spouse, okay? And I knew Rapunzel would know where my spouse is. Why? Because I knew that they were having an affair. So I messaged her and he wasn't home, but we couldn't find him, okay? My kids were asking for him. They couldn't find him. We couldn't find him. We're texting him. We're calling him, phone this off. We don't know where this man is at. I'm like, he been missing for 24, 48 hours now. I'm gonna need him to turn up because these kids are asking for their father. Because at that point, they were used to him being around. Might not have been a lot, but they were used to him. They knew that he lived here. Uh, in March, I had texted her and told her that his children are trying to reach him, okay? If she could be so kind to let him know that his daughters would like to speak to him, that would be great. And I sent her some pictures of the kids and I said to her, and if you ever want to babysit for us, please let us know, okay? But I was obviously never gonna let this heifer watch my kids. Okay, let's be, let's be very clear. She texts me back three hours later and says, hello, um, Chucky works tomorrow. I'll let him know when I see him at work. No, 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 you let him know now because he's in your bed, ma'am. You let him know now, okay? She said, have a nice day. I said, I figured you could Snapchat him and let him know. He called them though, so all good. Keep in mind, he called them after she had messaged me, which let me know Oh, you told him what you needed to tell him. Your wife is looking for you because your daughters are looking for you. You laid up over here with me. So then, fast forward to this incident that I'm talking to you about where he takes the kids to the park and I go outside and I see his car. So this is in May now. I said, since you're letting Chucky drive your little Fiat without a valid driver's license. I know it was you who texted me from his phone that day inserting yourself into our business when you don't know shit about what's going on here. Don't ever try that shit again talking to me about my kids. You don't know how he was treating our children or me as to why he was kicked out to begin with. This girl's not ignorant to what the freak was going on because I let her know, okay? I let her know. I will make it clear to you because I know Chucky has tried to paint me as the woman who still wants him and that is very false. Y'all are free to F on him as much as y'all want. Just mind your damn mouth texting me from his phone pretending to be him because next time I won't be sending a courtesy text, period. Ask Chucky to see his license before you lose your car because the police pull him over for being on his phone and speeding. So this is when she gives herself away. Hi, woman to woman, 